How did he know that suffering, the cause, stopping it, and cultivating an eightfold power, how did he know suffering, there is an illness, the cause of suffering, diagnosing the illness, treating the suffering, stopping that illness. The Eightfold Path, how did he know giving a prescription? How, how did he know? And as he said, in all the monasteries, the Theravadan at least, at least twice a day, Ya di dum chitari purisa yugani ata purisa pugula. The four pairs, the eight kinds, the eightfold path, the four pairs, the four eight kinds. These are my closest disciples. My closest disciples. Yeah. What are you doing in there at this very moment? What are you doing? Ask yourself, what am I doing in here? What are you doing? Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. There's always been a lot going on. Ever since we were born, remember, we all was little kids running around on the playground, having fun, no clothes on, having a good time. Then all of a sudden, these rules and blah, blah, stuff begins to happen. Oh, you, you and that skin, oh, that's, oh, that here, oh, this cup, all these things begun to happen. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Mentioning the Eightfold Path. Yeah. So good to be here at Common Ground Meditation Center. Wow. Just touching on, because I'll be back and we'll spend more time with this. Because it's not to be taken lightly, these eight great elders. There's wisdom, there's conduct, and there's concentration in that order. Excuse me, in that order, conduct, wisdom, and concentration. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to get it together. And we need to practice discrimination, the wisdom, before we even touch, begin to get into concentration. You don't work it right, what happens? What's the one of the most common questions that has been addressed to in retreats, not in retreats by yourself, listening to little apps, the most common questions, pain. How do I work with my pain? Mental pain, physical pain. Yeah. Each one of us is a wild stallion very wild, doing our own thing. That's okay. But beginning to tame it, whoa, hmm. And who's gonna tame it? Nobody outside of us. Mm -mm. Nobody can, people have tried, but nobody can. It's a personal decision. 
And when you decide to do that, oh my, so many things begin to happen on so many different levels simultaneously. I remember doing a practice in San Quentin prison. They put me in this building, cathedral, huge church. I was standing in there and I sat down and I stand and I sat down and I stand and I did a little bit of walking meditation. And then I looked at my little Apple watch at the time and I know this, holy cow, two hours, 25 minutes went by. What's going on? What's happening? Then all of a sudden, soon as I said, what's happening? I began to hear, hear sound and people began walking in the room. Oh my. Well, and you know, at least minimum 50% is black. I mean, that's across the prison system in the country. That's a modern day slavery there, okay? Okay. You just Google this kind of stuff to get, what is it, fact check that at least that's the best thing our Commander in chief, last one did, came up with, created that. Uh, I don't think his office did, but still, fact check, beautiful. Anyway, tears, just tears began coming down my eyes of joy. I said, wow, because I haven't seen human beings like this since I was in Rome. Amazing human beings who have decided to turn their life around. I mean, they're never going to get out. Holy cow. You put them in a room, they just light the room up. And I'm not hallucinating. This is what happens. Because each one of us, a star, it's been told us. We are light. We are the essence of love, each one of us. But it's amazing we have to practice love, but we are the essence of love. What we need to practice is pull the weeds out in front of it, just blocking the light. That's what we got to practice. We have to worry about the love part. We got to worry about pulling out all that weed. <clears throat> and get things in order. It's so important. We're in the battlefield, but at this very moment, for the next several months, we're not in the front line. If you don't, on your altar, you should have this councilman's name, Benjamin Crumb. That human being is on the front lines, defending George Floyd, the blessed, the great and almighty, who you will see eventually as I continue talking of what he has done. A deva, an angel, wow. What that human being has done, oh my. So Benjamin Crumb, I see him, his name, here, 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 as I go through my, because he needs, that brother needs the help. And we, this is why we're here, people. It's one thing being here, but it's one thing getting it all lined up. So let's line it up. So in conduct, in that basket, or in that cathedral, or in that mansion, or in that spaceship, whatever language you want to play with, this speech, and that's what I decided to practice on for this year. I say, oh, okay, I'm gonna work on speech, Ralph. And this other part of me say, yeah, good luck. And then there's action. And there's livelihood. 
right? I mean, this stuff is easy because it's a one, two, three. It seems easy, but it's not. I wish it was. I mean, you can just ask yourself today, how did you do with these three? And once you begin to get some mileage with cleaning up your room and if you're in a relationship, having your conversation, being okay with regards to your room, you're feeling okay about that, then you can begin to work on the basket of wisdom. Or you can play with language. I mean, English is my second language. Gullah is my first. I'm from the Sea Islands. And I just love the language here in English. It's, it's, it's when I was in tech school in college, it was, I would go to and get a book in the library, in the library, just stay in there. Don't check it out, but get one here's 50 years old copyright go 50 years in the future or in the past it does matter just keep them 50 years and that's see a different kind of english being written being spoken being authorship so it's the english language is so wonderful because it's always changing there's view view or right view or understanding Having the view or having the understanding, whichever one you prefer, it's your choice. Then there's thought, either thought, thinking, or resolve. Again, we're playing with language here. Your choice. Your choice. But you got to work with it. We're not talking about thinking and speech this way, but this way. We got to, that's where the work is at. Hmm. Then after we've gotten some mileage in working with that, it's a big deal. Then there's concentration. The concentration is so big. Hmm. It has its own basket. The right kind of effort. That kind of effort is just like the gas pedal on the car when you're driving it. Gasoline car, that is, or any kind of fuel-driven car. You know, it goes how oh, you have to work with the effort. because we can get stuck in this linear world and think that, okay, here's a square or here's a circle or, or whatever we want to play with there, but everything is always changing. And it's been changing way before we were born. In other words, it moves, everything moves, everything moves, everything is impermanent, everything is changing. A rock, whatever, whatever you want to dance with. It's always changing, okay? And once we accept that, then we can get in the dance and work with that. Mm. You no. Know, uh, there is a dance and you gotta have rhythm in there. You gotta have your own rhythm. You don't have to be African-American black. And it was in Burma, Myanmar. I mean, it was Burma when I was there. It's my mind now, and it was locked down then in the 90s, just like how it's locked down now. But I tell you, the practice wasn't locked down, and the people wasn't locked down. Oh, mm. yes. Oh, my. Not only the teacher was giving the teachings, but the people was grooving with the teachings. Think you in a African-American gospel church. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's 
So there's effort in that basket of concentration. Mindfulness, oh man. <laughs> My dear friend, dear friend, Johnny, John Kevin Zen. I remember when he started his program. And then he said, he said, Ralph, people want a, a certificate because they go into the mind, mindfulness program. I said, Johnny, well, make it up, man. Everything else is made up. PhD, MA, it doesn't matter. Just make it up. <laughs> My wife's from Germany. I mean, Johnny called up again and said, he wanted to know the name of this publishing company. And if it was reputable, he gave us, and we said, yes, go, go with this particular company. Yes, please do. In 12 months, that book, Full Catastrophe Living, was in seven different language. In 12 months. People in this country didn't know anything about it. No one, Full Catastrophe, mindfulness, what, what is that? No, no. Yeah. Then we were on vacation, yeah, about maybe five, seven years back, something like that. It was less than 10. And Johnny called us up and said, guess what? Anderson Cooper, CBS wants to do a thing on mindfulness. I said, about time. I mean, Cambridge has mindfulness center, Oxford, that on and on around the globe. And so he said, I want you to be there. CBS gonna write the check. We need to create a retreat. First time being in a retreat with all kinds of boom mics all over the place. And I felt like a homeless person because it was Silicon Valley was there. And, and we had a Senator there and he sat next to me. Da, 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 da. I said, I've never sat next to a Senator before. I, said, I sure admire you. And wonderful human being, Congressman Tim Ryan. And after that, 400 and some odd hours of taping, they edited it down. I think you can still Google that and get it to about maybe uh, seven to 12 minutes or something. Then all of a sudden, Newsweek, all the magazines in the country, the conscious mindfulness all over the place. Boom, 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 boom. Now, all of a sudden, mindfulness this, mindfulness yoga, this mindfulness class, this mindfulness kind of training. I'm waiting for a mindfulness hamburger to come out now. You know, this is what we do. You need to understand this is what we do. Mindfulness. So be careful. Because mindfulness is... Uh, you should Google, Google mindfulness so you can get the access to insight.org. I would use that because that's a monastic site. So you can really get the, the true understanding of what is mindfulness because it's huge. It's the, it's the most utilized terminology in the Pali Canon. It's big, okay? And you won't get it from just reading it, reading one page, 10 page, 10 books, 100 books, you're not gonna get it like that. It only comes through practice. It comes through practice. Oh, this level of mindfulness and another level of mindfulness. But you're ready for it if you utilize wisdom and conduct. You're ready for, oh, samadhi. Oh, okay, yeah, samadhi, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that what they call jhana? Oh, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. You ready for, oh, well, sitting two hours, three hours, like my students, they, no issues, because is, is you, you mentioned sitting two hours, fear comes up. We create that. We, the body is so intelligent, 
we already put an obstacle there. So you begin to try to practice. Of course, you go to bodies and no, nope, you already told the body that no, nope, I'm not, I can't do that. So there's issues already coming up. It's understanding how it works. And the only way you're gonna understand that is practice. Practice sitting, practice walking. Walking is my favorite. It's beautiful. Walking is my real favorite. Mm. But you have to have the conduct. Oh my. What are you doing in there? Like I said, let's see. There's a few little lines I pull out of my books here that I wrote some time back, like yesterday or something like that. With conduct, the, the crucial distinction is that each truth is not something to believe, but requires being seen and acted upon in its own particular way. Failing to make this distinction the truth can be mistaken for a belief system. That's a biggie. Leading one to mistakenly believe that life is suffering or my life is the cause of suffering or better yet, since it's been going this way instead of this way, Ending my life is the end of my suffering. It's a big, big, big suicide me. You know, we all know this since this virus. It's intense. Mistakenly, okay? The conduct. Conduct is, oh boy. The elephant footprint reveals the freedom from craving. This one monk, I accidentally came upon him, stepped in the room to pay my respects. And soon as I stepped in the room, I didn't even ask. Soon as I stepped in the room, tears started coming down my eyes. I was down on my knees. The practice speaks for itself. You didn't get to that level from breathing. And all kinds of things happened as one practice more. You can make up your own kinds of language of the experiences, but that's all it is and an experience. Why? Because the physical body eventually stops. So what are you doing in there? He gave me this picture and he said, hey, keep this between the pages to get out of the country. And I didn't know anything about her then, but that's Aung Sung Suchi. He used to go and visit her all the time and the guards never saw him go in or out. Amazing human being. Amazing. Yeah, you all got your thoughts, your thinking and everything. Imagine someone knowing everything you've been doing since you came out of the womb. Every single thing. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. But most of my teachings over there came from women. Abbas would say, go talk to her, go talk to her, yeah. 
Yeah. They taught me right. They taught me how to be. They taught me how to share with you, how I'm sharing with you now. We all have wisdom. We all have an immense amount of wisdom. It's unbelievable. What you hearing now, it should have been taught to us when we were in kindergarten, elementary school, you know? And here we are about to step off into the other side, some of us. Wisdom. It is important only if you want to embrace the Dharma. Only if you want to embrace the Dharma. Now, Dharma. Okay. There's D H A R M A, Dharma. Dharma. That's been in the literary world, that's been mostly utilized. And if you take that phonetic and break that down, Dharma. Da, um, cradle, cradle, D-H-A-R, then Ma, M-A, Ma, the mother, oh yeah, what are we doing? We're supposed to learn how to cradle the mother. Mm. Poly meaning, meaning D-H-A-M-M-A, Dharma. Thai language has different sounds, means different meanings, but Dham, Dham, D H A M M, Dham, D H A M, D H A M, not M M, excuse me, Dham, nature, nature, mother, ma, ah. nature, cradling it, ma, ah. all one. Um, so with that meaning and understanding, what is this Dharma stuff? I mean, it's here even if the universe is gone. It is important only if you want to embrace the Dharma, to cultivate, nourish the water, the healthy seed that's with, within each one of us. Now, Shariputra had the ability to distinguish wholesome from unwholesome. Now, who's this guy, Shariputra? Well, there's Shariputra and there's Mogulana. And you may have seen some pictures of the Buddha, a Buddha statue. And there's a monk standing on each side or a monk sitting on each side. That's a depiction of Shariputra and Mogalana. Mogalana is known as the master of various kinds of psychic powers. Shariputra is the master of philosophy of knowledge. This is why in the Zen tradition, Oh, Shariputra, form is only emptiness. Emptiness is only form. Yeah, yeah, Shariputra. Mm. Now, listen carefully. Shariputra had the ability to distinguish wholesome from unwholesome. That is why he has been re referred to as the marshal of the Dharma, the marshal of the mothership. Black Lives Matter movement. 
look what has been happening globally for the first time in all of our lives, all of us. What have we been seeing? From corporation to small business to family to women, inequality on the table, not just on the table, being addressed. Huge inequality. Never heard of that. Globally, inequality. Quickly. Since the Black Lives big bow to that new generation. Oh my, huge bow. This is not just black, white, brown, all human beings in that generation. This is enough, we've had it. This is what they've been saying globally. Oh my, pulling down statues in this country, all, all just, I can just go on and on, Germany, it's amazing. Wish I was in my 20s or 30s. I'll, I'll probably be out there too having a good time. No, it's just amazing. That Black Lives move, Movement has turned into the Marshall, getting it right. Huge, huge blessings, Mr. George Floyd gave. Huge. And I don't see the end. There's no end yet. It's all being addressed. Holy cow. It's amazing. We need to keep our focus now, though, on Mr. Councilman Benjamin Crump. Please. Yes, said Arthur, the Buddha, was teaching us how to be our own physician. Either you're going to be your own physician or you're going to continue um, in some kind of way having other people take care of you or tell you what to do and things like that. You know, like I'm a vet, so I have a VA hospital, but still because of this crazy virus, um, I, I might have to get some dental, getting some dental work done. So in that process, I have to get some health insurance. I'm rebel. I'm a rebel. <laughs> First, at age 70, I'm getting health insurance. Oh boy, what a process. What a process. In this system. So you gotta take care of yourself. That it is so important. What's going to motivate you to really take care of yourself? To understand that if I stick my head in that fire, I'm going to get burned. If I take my mask off and not wear my mask, I'm going to go home and kill my kids from the virus and not even know it. So much has happened right in front of our eyes. Not one time, not a hundred times. It's mind-boggling, people, how the human being operates. It's just, yeah, it, that's right. Mind-boggling meaning it doesn't make sense. This is why uh, it's a word that we don't like here. Ignorance, I mean, not understanding. An independent origination, it's a word we don't like. That's the first one. Ignorance, just not understanding. And, and, and it's proven, 
you know, just because you got funny net letters after your name, PhD, MD, whatever. Because we see it all right happen right in front of our eyes. What position you are from the from Capitol Hill on down to in your own community, we see it happen right in front of our eyes. Wow. Ignorance. Yeah. I take my mask off because I got my right. Okay. Stick my hand in that fire. I got my right to burn my skin. I got my right to go home and kill my kids and my wife. I take. Mm -hmm. And my friends probably too, if they was around me. Holy cow. Wow. Amazing. Mm. So this is why concentration is so powerful. You no, know, it's like a sharp knife. You need concentration is a sharp, sharp knife. We all want, we all want samadhi. We all want to be concentrated in everything. If you get that knife very sharp, you best know how to utilize it. And some people want to fast track. That's okay. You take the fast track. How do I associate concentration? Concentration is like drinking. It's like. Uh, Oh, a fifth of single malt scotch. Single malt, okay? A fifth, a fifth, okay? That's concentration, okay? Now, can you take, let's just say two, two shots, two shots and walk out the door and drive the car. Then forget about a whole half of, half of the bottle, okay? It takes practice, now you can build up. Now you give that to a certified alcoholic, he could take that bottle and just throw it down. No big deal. Yeah, it's damage to his body, yeah. But he's acclimated to drinking a whole fifth. That's concentration. You need to get, that's why practice is so powerful and so important and consistency is so powerful. So needed because it's, we want it in increments. It makes sense in increments. Mm. Here's something here with regards to concentration. I was in a retreat and where was I? In Myanmar, yeah, in Burma. And I was doing an intensive there and we're mm, 17, 18 hours a day practicing. And it was this one moment, I think it was around maybe 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning. And I told myself, I'm not gonna move. I'm not gonna move. Whatever comes up, I'm not gonna move. And difficulties begin to happen in my low back or my back. And I just yelled out. I mean, I yelled out. And I said, say, kill me, kill me. Tears were running down my eyes. I didn't move like it was round four, four. It was time to go in the arms round and get my food. And I was proud. I didn't move. And I started moving my body. And I noticed my legs was not working right. And then as time went on, I looked in the bathroom mirror and looked at my back. And these black spots was on my back. I didn't know what would ha had happened. I just know my back was sore. Went in for my interview with my abbot. And he said, take a week and do loving kindness practice. Metta, he said, take a week and do metta practice. A week 
in this kind of scene is like a day. So I did a week of metta and the concentration, wow. Whatever discomfort just began to happen. Soon as I put my, forget about thinking, that wasn't even there. Just put my awareness on it, gone. Whatever, gone, gone. Take my hand and you move it and you see many hands. You see many hands. We talk about subtle body and energy and, and all these different feelings in science. That's in science, that's the level of quantum mechanics or quantum physics. It all depends on how far you want to go because there's no end. I thought there was an end. I was going to the five, 10 day retreats so regularly. Oh, I'm going, I'm getting enlightened. I want to get enlightened. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Not, not knowing that that had already happened. Here you, you, the ice cream is in front of you and you're looking, you know. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You're here because you have already woke up. Okay. That's why you're here. There's no coincidence. But just because we have woken up, that does mean outside of our body is peaceful. There's issues. Remember people, this plane of existence is good and evil, good and evil, good. It always been like that. All kinds of poems, plays, movies, good and evil, good and evil. Never been peace on this planet. There's never been all evil on this planet also. But this is the planet where we learn. And it is up to you if you want to get in the dance to learn and find out how it works. That's a personal decision. <clears throat> Siddhartha, he was Buddha. He became the Buddha, but he became Buddha number 27. Did you know that? What do you mean Buddha number 27? How is that? How is this universe? Yeah, that's right. This universe has expanded and collapsed many times. That's right. Mm -hmm. I got the Chronicles of the Buddha right up on my bookshelf. Hope to give a talk someday. Begin giving talks in that area of the names and the life of all the 27 Buddhas. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong now. Uh, I mean, the theologian came together with the scientists in Amherst College. You can research that early 80s. Mind Science Conference. According to the definition of Religion, Buddhism didn't fit, it's not a religion. According to the definition of science, Buddhism didn't fit, it's not a science. He was teaching us how to manage ourselves. We only have a few minutes left here. So much I want to share with you, but this is the elephant footprint. <laughs> you know, you can't just, it's huge. Here's something. The mind of the ancient Buddhas. 
The mind of the ancient Buddha should not be understood as something irrelevant to your experience, as some mind which exists from the beginningless past, for it is the mind which eats pizza, the mind with each cranberry juice, the mind that eats veggie juice, it's the mind that goes for a walk. It's the mind that eats all kinds of different kinds of food in your ordinary everyday life. It is the mind which is grass, the mind which is water within the life just as it is is the act of sitting like a Buddha, which is called arousing the thought of enlightenment. Seeing things as they are. Boom, right here. This is a good place to stop. That's enough for now. I, I made reservation to come here a, a few more times, once a month, and we'll get in more depth and break out rooms and stuff and working with the A4 power. And you all are invited. <laughs> I hope to be with you, okay? I love each one of you. Yeah. One practice. I'll give you one practice. When you look at somebody, I don't care who it is, keep looking, keep looking until you see yourself. If you don't see yourself, it's a cue. Oh, I still got some issue. I still got some stuff to work on. Okay. Then once you've done that, then keep looking until you don't see nobody because we all want. Thank you, Ro. <laughs> That's a hefty piece of homework. And back to your question, I love it. What are you doing in there? What are you doing in there? Uh, as Ralph said, he'll be back with us. Um, soon. And thank you so much for your offering this evening, Ralph. And thank you all for, for joining us. Um, as I mentioned, this was uh, the boot, Truth and Justice Vigil is a vision of Ayo Yatunde and myself um, um, as part of bringing light to um, this injustice and our own actions. And so the Buddhist Justice Reporter is a group of Buddhist, BIPOC Buddhist practitioners who've come together to write and sit and organize around the murder of George Floyd. You can visit BuddhistJustice.com or uh, to follow the trial in a mindful and sensitive way. Um, and you can offer support to Buddhist Justice Reporter, and you can also offer um, support to the teachers that will be holding space with us over the months, every Tuesday, in this Buddhist or in this uh, Truth and Justice vigil. Ralph has so uh, generously offered his dana back and asked that we offer that support to an organization supporting women experiencing homelessness. So if you um, are able and move to uh, support Ralph's vision and uh, yeah, his heart, then please visit the Common Ground website. And I think it's uh, put into the chat um, and you can indicate uh, Truth and Justice Vigil for that Donna to be offered to the local organization. 
We'll be back again next week uh, with Noliway Alexander, who is a lovely spirit and teacher. She's uh, graduated Spirit Rock CDL program and uh, East Bay Meditation Center's Commit to Dharma program and a recent graduate of the Spirit Rock teacher training program. Um, yeah, so I hope that you're able to join us again. And thank you again so much, Ralph, for your lovely voice and singing and humming and storytelling and deep wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Take good care of yourselves and each other.